Today we talk about a recent cultural event in our Propi groups. Hello and welcome to Teacher Learning Cast, episode number 26. Today is November 24th, 2018. Welcome everyone. My name is Benjamin Stewart calling from lovely Aguascalientes. Good morning everybody. This is Petey Herrera, also here in Aguascalientes after a little gap uh, ending episode 25. We took uh, a little rest, well, not really resting, but working on the end of the semester, but now we are back to discuss a little bit about education, especially teaching and learning of languages. And uh, today with a very interesting topic with Benjamin Stewart, who uh, just held an event in his groups for language learning uh, as a coordinator. So he will talk about that in a moment. But uh, uh, stay with us. I invite you to join us, make comments, join the Google Hangout, or whatever you want to do today in Teacher Learning Cast. You are welcome, as always. Benjamin, how are you? Great, Petey. Yeah, it's been almost a month here uh, since we've last uh, had our uh, broadcast, but it's good to be back. And uh, I think it's important to take this time to mention that everything that we share in Teacher Learning Cast is our own thoughts, uh, our own opinions. And it's really an opportunity for us to share our, our ideas. And we really do this just, uh, you know, it's not part of our work schedule. This is something that we just have an interest in doing. And uh, sometimes things come up. We get uh, really busy with some other things. But we're happy to be back today to share with you uh, some other opinions, some other experiences, and encourage everyone who's listening to do the same. You can uh, share your comments and perspectives and anything you're doing in the classroom in our, our uh, uh, web page in Facebook, Teacher Learning Cast. So feel free to post uh, your comments there. If you have any particular comments regarding what we talk about today, feel free to share those as well. We're always interested in hearing from you, hearing what kind of experiences and challenges and successes you're, you're facing in your classroom. And if you ever wanna be a part of the show, uh, feel free to just jump in. Every week we include the live link to the Hangout. So if you want to be part of this recorded broadcast, uh, feel free just to, to pop in. It's not necessary to, to stay the whole time. I know we have a lot of teachers who listen who are really busy. They might even be working or on their way to work, and we certainly understand that. But if you want to be part of the broadcast and just uh, come in, uh, feel free to do so. If you ever want to plan a session in the future and want to be part of more of a formal uh, talk or presentation, you can also do that as well. If you have some events that, uh, in fact, today we're going to share a recent event that we uh, participated in yesterday, but if you have a similar event that you want to either promote or equally as, uh, you know, share with us and with others, again, these this is the place uh, to do it. This is why we do it. Uh, and not because what what we say is necessarily any better than anyone else's opinions. We want to hear from you and hear your opinions. Yeah, Ben, now that you mentioned uh, a couple of things you said there, it, it uh, brought to my mind uh, the um, uh, freedom that we do have here in Mexico in teaching. And I think uh, uh, all teachers in all institutions, in all places, we have certain freedoms in our teaching way, in our teaching um, paths and the decisions we make. And at different levels, of course, there will be institutions or private institutions who are very much st stuck to certain patterns. But anyhow, there's always freedom. And uh, I'm glad that the place that we both work at uh, allows us, we do have guidelines and we do have certain models to follow and though we still have a lot of freedom to do things, and I think that gives you the responsibility also to share with others, as you mentioned, and uh, and see what other people think or has or, or what other other teachers, especially, have to say and share about what we are doing and about what they are doing in their places. Yeah, I think the key word that you mentioned here, the word responsibility. I think we all have to a certain degree of responsibility to share. Again, whether it's open and public as we're doing, or if it's simply just working with your colleagues that you see face to face every day, I think that we uh, we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our colleagues to share uh, to share those as much as possible. So um, 
yeah, let's let's get right into it, Bidi, if uh, if you want. Um, I'd like to share really what uh, an event that we had yesterday at the University Autonoma de Aguas Calientes. And I'd like to share with you from a, diff a couple of different perspectives. One, as a, as a coordinator of the, ac the academy that uh, was responsible for the event, as well as a teacher, uh, and kind of share some of my insights and opinions on, on what happened. And I know you uh, were able to attend uh, the event as well, so uh, maybe we can talk about that, your opinion, what you took away from the event, any, any comments, suggestions, or opinions that you had uh, as, as a teacher as well, observing some of the, uh, some of the talks that we, uh, that we had. So this yes. uh, and a, yeah, little bit you, a little bit before you go on, I just uh, maybe it's important for for our audience to know that uh, it's it, it's going to be kind of a different perspective because I was not involved at all in the event, and I think that's the rich part of this because I I happened to be in the event and I took advantage of uh, enjoying the time actually of the final product with the students of this event. Well, maybe not the final final because for sure there will be a lot to say and discuss with the students after after uh, this event but but i was there and i enjoyed it but i was not part at all of the organization i didn't ha i didn't have an idea of what exactly was i mean i i just knew the generals it was an, an open invitation to the event it was uh, an open invitation to uh, an exhibition of different countries and uh in order for students to uh show uh, kind of a product after a process that's why pretty much i understood and that was my perspective on right. the other side as you mentioned while well, you work as a coordinator and also as a teacher right and i think that that's one of the reasons why we decided really at the last minute to talk about this uh, today in fact we weren't even planning on uh, discussing this today um but i think the point that you're making about your perspective i think is important i think this will bring uh, uh, some richness i think to this uh, today's conversation so um, let me let me give you a little bit of history, a little bit of context uh, for those who aren't familiar with our um, how we work. Um, this semester, I am teaching a, a prope group. We have a propedeutic year in our BA in English language teaching program, which is a four year degree. We have a propedeutic year for those students who don't quite have the level of English necessary to enter into the first semester. So we have a, a full year of propedeutic courses that make up uh, courses like, or classes uh, such as listening and speaking, reading and writing, grammar, and listening strategies. So all of these courses are really designed to offer a kind of an intensive year of study so that students get as much exposure as possible to the English language so that they can have the B1 minimum requirement necessary to uh, enter into the first semester. So this first full year uh, is broken into two separate semesters, and uh, this this semester we're in uh, November of 2018, so we're just now concluding the first semester of this propedeutic uh, year. So this this semester I am teaching a writing one uh, course. This is focused mainly on uh, writing. Again, students are also taking uh, courses in listening, speaking, reading and uh, listening, learning strategies. So um, as a coordinator for this particular academy, this coordination that I'm uh, responsible for is really in, sets out to help students um, improve their English skill ability. So we have courses throughout the BA program, which includes Prope, that focus on skill development. And so we have teachers that teach at all levels uh, throughout the BA that are all designed uh, for, uh, for the, to, to this end, to help students uh, improve their English level ability. So this particular semester, we have teachers who are teaching in first semester, third semester, fifth semester, and seventh semester. And so the idea that we had, and this was something that we didn't really talk about in the academy until September, about a month into the semester. And as a coordinator, I was trying to think of something that we could do for Prope, some sort of end project, some a capstone project that students could participate in. And almost as an excuse to 
find a way for our teachers in our academy to to work out. Now I say kind of excuse and in, in, uh, not in the literal sense, but really finding a way to maybe have a, a project that our teachers in our academy could could work together and make some decisions and try to see if there's a way that we could offer uh, an experience for not only our students in prope, because again, I'm thinking as a teacher in my prope class, what can I, what can we do to to offer to help them? But more than that, find a way that we could integrate some sort of project where students from upper level groups could also interact with the students. I think this was one of the main goals that at least I had uh, initially envisioned from the beginning that. I was. I felt that it was really important for these learners to be able to interact because, again, these are first semester students, so they're new to the university. They're they're new to the BA, of course, but they're also new to the university. So this is their first semester. They they may not know a lot of the other students in the BA, and uh, so this was another reason for thinking about it in terms of how can we create some sort of project where learners are interacting with upper level students as well. Of yeah, course, but if you yeah. allow me here, uh, yeah. uh, it's curious to, uh, I mean, uh, what, what, what you mentioned, because it's, it's kind of in the same tune. I have a class in the time of the event, I have a two hours class, exactly the, the time of the event. And um, we, we rush that day in order to finish half an hour early to have the opportunity to go and see this. But exactly what you're saying about supporting our proper students and connecting with others, that's exactly what I told my students uh, when we finished the class, that uh, I invited them to join the event and, and, and drop by at least and see in order to support their classmates, mainly because uh, of the idea that um, they've been there before, they know what it is like to have first encounters with using the language for longer than answering a short question in front of others. And uh, at the same time, uh, they could also see the reflection of what they were like. like uh, it, this is uh, third semester, so like two years ago, they were in that position. And now they can see kind of a reflection of what they are doing now in different courses. And it's exactly pretty much what you just mentioned is what I told them to, to go there. So. So, somehow in the same tune, right? Yeah, and and this doesn't this event doesn't work unless other teachers are along those same lines. And you know, I know that you're not in our academy, and it just so happened that you know you're giving the same good advice that we all agreed on uh, within our academy. But this is precisely what I mean that you know it, it doesn't work. Um, you know, it's it, it's. It doesn't work unless we have really good participation throughout the BA and, and teachers are kind of on board and we have some sort of um, a consensus really on, on how all of this kind of, uh, you know, how, how it all desi is designed and how it is implemented. Um, but let me go into a little bit about um, how we came together in the academy because I think this is really the key. This was not something that I did. This was not my uh, idea necessarily. I mean, this was more... Uh, of a group project. So when we started talking about it in the academy, one of the concerns was that, well, this is going to be, you know, more work. You know, this is going to be a project that, uh, you know, we've already set the syllabus. We already have our requirements. We know what we're going to assess in our own classes. How can we possibly get, you know, this project off the ground? And how how can this work when we're we're already busy with uh, our own planning, and, and we've already designed pretty much what we're going to focus on for the semester. And I think one of the things we agreed on early on was that this project was to represent what they accomplished in each of their respective classes. So it wasn't necessarily uh, meant to be additional work or additional planning. Um, it was more thinking in terms of how can we align this event with the the way that we're going to assess and the products that we're asking our students to already complete how can we align those two in such a way that it's not going to be a lot of uh, of extra work on the part of the students and for the for the teachers and this was something that was very clear from the beginning that we were not to change anything in the syllabus of course because we had already be, uh, begun the the semester 
And so it was more just kind of us discussing as an academy uh, different examples and situations of uh, products or exercises or things that they could do in the final product so that project so that they could see how this would align in their own respective classes. And so that was an early a discussion that we had early on and that we resolved uh, so that, you know, that we're all on the same page, that we didn't look at this as something that was uh, just going to be additional work. So the next thing that we talked about in the academy was, or we, that we decided on, was that one of the things was we wanted, uh, obviously, e we wanted equal participation throughout. So we wanted all of the Propy students to be able to work in groups. They, they decide, we decided that groups of uh, four we're going to be four to five. We're going to be ideal for for this particular um, group, and um, we we wanted to have equal participation though from upperclassmen. So what we did was we divided up the groups, the appropriate groups. We created a spreadsheet basically and had all eight groups. So we had eight appropriate groups, and each of the upper class. Up the upper uh, level uh, learners, they divided up in each group. So, for example, first semester they would uh, they would divide up that group by eight, so that every student in every group had were assigned a particular group that they were going to evaluate. And so, we didn't want that every we didn't want like a first semester group to come in and just all go to one or two uh, of the countries or one or two of the, the appropriate groups. So we wanted to make sure that we had equal participation throughout. So because we had groups from the first semester, the third semester, and the seventh semester, uh, we divided up all of those groups so in half-hour increments. So the event was scheduled from 10 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock, two hours, and every 30 minutes, a different group would come in and they would all go to their assigned groups. And uh, this worked really well because, again, the idea was that every half hour, the students were coming in, new groups were coming in, and everybody was assigned to a group. And so there was no, there was no lag. There was no lot of kind of downtime where students were waiting like an hour to, to present something. For example, they were, they were presenting almost continuously those two hours. And I think that was due to the way that we planned and how we divided up the groups uh -huh. so that you know the te the students were coming and going uh, with with a good flow and and it wasn't too packed. And there there were times where there were a lot of people in each group, but I felt that it wasn't uh, uh, too much in the sense that uh, we went, we didn't have a lot of students like waiting outside the room because they couldn't fit to, to get in. I think there was a good balance and uh, a good flow of students coming in and out. And so this was something that we did plan very specifically at the begin from the beginning. Uh, with this in mind, so again, that that there was that students had an opportunity to present many times uh, throughout this two-hour process. Pro Propy students probably pre presented their fifteen to twenty-minute presentation. You know, I would say, you know, five or six times at least um, throughout their throughout the the presentation. So this was something else that we decided as an academy. And uh, I think looking back now, I think it worked fairly well in the sense that, you know, again, students were uh, participating pretty much throughout uh, the two hour event. So um, basically, those are the things we worked on. We had, you know, many meetings. We decided on how uh, students were going to assess. And I think maybe I can dive into that because I think this was an interesting way of uh, doing it that we decided as a as an academy, we wanted to evaluate the students. We wanted the, the students to evaluate the students. Okay, so first of all, I, I want to say that the the feedback that the Prope learners were to receive from this event were from students only. We didn't want to have teachers uh, sure. give any type of assessment in terms of the presentation itself. Now, remember that everything that they're doing was was coming from a particular class. So of course the, the teachers were evaluating the, the students progress in their classroom as, as they would normally do. But for the purposes of this, pre this uh, event, we wanted student feedback. We wanted student to student feedback and we wanted 
then all the feedback be positive. So we, we're, we're instructing our students from upper level groups to provide only positive feedback to our Prope learners. Because again, we wanted this to be, you know, a positive experience. And, and um, we also didn't want to, uh, you know, have learners provide, you know, negative feedback if they weren't really comfortable doing that and so yeah. on. So maybe I can uh, jump a little bit in here just to tell you the first impression uh, that I have. Uh, can, can you fix my view on the main screen so I can, uh, while you talk, I can share the pictures, please? Sure. Uh, that, that this is the pictures that are you uploaded into the teacher learning cast page from the students. My first impression here is that uh, what I saw actually happening over there is that uh, uh, we came into the classrooms and the first impression is that we have uh, nicely set tables with a lot of information, available information to the view, specifically understanding what this was about, uh, students dressed up uh, about the country they were representing, a lot of paraphernalia uh, related to the country, uh, big screens, uh, but I think one of the most important thing, things I realized at this moment is the excitement of your students, of your proper students, faces that were eager to demonstrate whatever they had prepared. They also saw some anxiety in the sense that uh, some of them, and I think those are the ones that show a little bit more of anxiety, some of them uh, knowing how difficult it was for them to structure whatever they were going to say, which at the end happened to be a general, a very good standard for everybody that I heard speaking and participating there. But, um, but yeah, I could tell that they were kind of nervous of having these kind of encounters. But at the same time, they were excited. They were uh, willing to share. And uh, all of them were kind of... Uh, in this team that they were, they all wanted to jump in and start from their part because I, I detected they divided different sections of the of whatever they were presenting and uh, and they were talking about the traditions, the food, uh, important people, and um, and general data about the country, right? And all of them were willing to share. They were well prepared. Uh, some of them. Uh, I think most of them tried to memorize certain things as a base for whatever they were speaking, but uh, some others were willing to go way beyond this. And uh, it was really interesting to see, most of all, their reaction when they saw people coming in. And when you would, uh, uh, when I, I could see other teachers approaching to the tables and also this kind of excitement, they, their faces, the backwash effect of having this kind of of situation, I think uh, uh, students at those moments had many things in mind. I would suggest uh, that during your uh, uh, feedback sessions or reflective sessions about the event, uh, help them somehow in a retrospective to place themselves in those moments, because I saw them, uh, first of all, when they saw us arriving, the second one is when they were actually talking about their part and when teachers were there in front of them. Yeah, um, I think event like this, um, I've, I've, I'm gonna keep your screen uh, highlighted, Petey, so if you wanna continue going through some of those pictures, that's fine. Um, but yeah, you're right, students as, as any class, right, and this, this group is no exception, they're, they're coming from different levels, some are more proficient than others, um, but yeah, they, they were very, they worked very hard. I was really surprised um, from, from two aspects. I mean, I, I totally expected that they were going to, you know, put together nice visually appealing stands. Um, but they really, I think I did a, a good job in uh, bringing in a variety of different visual uh, aids and uh, I think they really uh, did a good job with that. But I, I was also happy with the way that they presented and I want to go a little bit deeper into what we decided or how we decided as an, an academy how the students were to provide feedback uh, to the, the students. So the first thing we wanted to come up with was the criteria for them uh, for evaluating the students, for 
for the upperclassmen groups to uh, evaluate the appropriate learners. So we, we decided to um, have two forms of feedback. One for uh, kind of a written type of feedback, more uh, quantitative, and a speaking or spoken feedback that was more qualitative. So what we did was we created a, a code for them to scan so that from each propi group, each propi group would have a, a leader that would uh, provide their phone number for WhatsApp. And so the, the learners who were going to evaluate the group would scan the code, get the phone number, and uh, automatically go into WhatsApp and provide audio feedback, verbal feedback to their performance. And that's one. There was a second code for written feedback that took the learn the the uh, upper uh, level learners to a Google form or a questionnaire where students would then provide written feedback that was based on a Likert scale. And this is what I want to share with you. It's a very simple Likert scale. It's five, I think, five items. And one of the criteria that they were looking at was called delivery. So within delivery, uh, they were going to either indicate very confusing or very clear. And delivery includes things like pronunciation, fluency, nonverbal communication, the use of grammar, and enthusiasm. So basically, how do they deliver their presentation? Uh, is, is covered uh, in this criterion. Uh, the second was presentation. Presentation included PowerPoint, their, how they presented, their, their costumes, any realia, art, music that was included in their presentation. This was, uh, this was another uh, indicator that they were to provide feedback on. The third aspect was participation. So basically, did all the participants all the team members participate equally. Uh, the next was the integration of skills. So we were looking for students who were presenting in a way that integrated everything that they learned uh, for the semester. So not just um, so not just their uh, procedural skills like uh, speaking and writing, um, but also their their knowledge of the actual content. Um, but this was very important here because we wanted them to, again, represent everything that they learned in all the classes. So this was part of that, uh, was making sure that uh, students knew that they were going to be evaluated uh, from, from the, that perspective. And then the integration of knowledge, uh, this would include some sort of uh, communicative skills. It could be also reflective. Uh, we asked students to not only talk about their countries, but also talk about as learners, what they learned and maybe challenges they, they faced. I don't know, Peter, if you saw some of the stands, they were they actually posted uh, successes and challenges right. that they faced throughout the semester. So they were encouraged to uh, share that as well. And this was something that, you know, uh, you know, my particular class, my writing one class, uh, I had both of these groups. You know, some students were are more reflective than others, obviously. So some were really open to reflect on those and others uh, less so. But I think that the idea was we wanted to give them enough opportunities and enough information to discuss so that they had plenty of things to choose from. And you mentioned the criteria, also the aspects of the country that they were going to include in their presentation, one being uh, food, another being traditions, famous people. We gave them basically five or six different uh, options that they could discuss and they could choose you know anywhere from three to four or some chose to talk about all five uh, elements but we gave them some flexibility in what they were to talk about you know and what they could uh, discuss and uh, so I think combination of them choosing what elements to discuss and then being very transparent in the, the rubric that we were going to use, that students were going to be using uh, for them to evaluate from the beginning, I think was helpful as they prepared for their presentation. They kind of knew that, you know, that students were going to be looking at these, these elements when they were going to provide uh, feedback. So uh, this was something that we decided on uh, in the academy. Uh, we had a, a teacher who was very uh, 
pretty much took care of all of the the codes, set up the codes. It was, it was fairly easy and in getting all of that together. Um, but it was a very much a group effort in the in the academy, you know, making these decisions and 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 creating these codes and deciding on on you know creating the the rubric and and making that available to all the students. Um, it was very much a group effort, and I think this is one of the key takeaways that I want to share with you today is that something like this doesn't happen, you know, from one person. It, it's really a group effort, and not just within our academy, who all the teachers worked really hard in, in pulling this together, but th the teachers from the rest of the BA, even those that aren't responsible for, uh, or maybe they don't teach in the, the, the academy, just their presence and, and participating and, and interacting with the, the learners. I think is also what helps uh, make an event like this a success. Yeah, Benjamin, I, 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 uh, I mean, a lot of things to 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 mention, but um, I think you're covering pretty much a lot of the interesting things about this kind of projects, which is uh, basically and and maybe roughly saying like that in this way, but basically a lot of people working uh, for each other's enrichment. I, I, I'm looking at the pictures too at the same time. And uh, I kind of remember what I saw there and, and what I'm looking in the picture. Uh, they the students were actually having a wide diversity, though you can see just at the table. I mean, if you put it in a simple way, it's a table with a lot of paraphernalia, the way I said at the beginning. But each of them, each of the elements uh, show the, that the students actually uh, care about the, uh, preparing something good for this event. What I mean is that, for example, we had uh, we had thing we have uh, visuals, we have food, we have the written things. The visuals come in different formats in which show students education, and all of these pieces are accompanied by information that they gather, inf information that they put on paper that they had at the stands. Uh, they had even uh, you can see in here uh, they had even brochures. Some of them uh, were actually kind of uh, excited about encouraging the audience to read the brochures which were about actually what you mentioned the the it, it was kind of a reflection on on the process right something like that you it, it, it was uh, like kind of a discussion of what they went through uh, and what that was in the brochure and, and and they were actually excited about sharing that too and uh, uh, some others had uh, uh, long lists, they had audios, they have videos, and uh, and besides all of this that you could read and see and listen there, they they also had the information which they learned in order to be able to discuss about this. They also had, uh, I, I think this was, I don't know why, but but it's something that, that um, uh, becomes important personally, the way they prepare, all of this for the audience, they have the knowledge, they have the written parts you can tell here at the back, at the front, in different formats, different displays, but they also have their own personal notes and information in different formats. Some of them had little cards, some of them had a notebook there, I guess, some of them had a formal card, printed card with the information, and, and uh, they were kind of referring to their I was uh, looking at it from the point of view of the teacher. So they were kind of looking at their lesson plan of what they were discussing. And uh, and they were bringing, bringing more and more information. And suddenly there were some topics in which uh, they could actually uh, enrich more with their own knowledge besides their notes. So uh, that tells me that uh, the actual preparation got them to be um, ready for this in the sense I mean, the, 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 one of the main aspects in here, it's also the language. And I could tell by the kind of words and sentences they were using uh, that they actually kept something uh, so that was relevant for them in mind. You could tell some, uh, for moments, uh, slips in the tongue of certain um, simple features, but at the same time, complex structuring and complex uh, vocabulary regarding the country itself they were, some of them were kind of very careful about the pronunciation of certain names in the food. So uh, I, I think uh, it's, it's all this hard work, which at the end, as you said, is not just one person. It's everybody together put, uh, put as a whole 
and I suppose teachers play an important role as guides and and uh, and the way they prepare for this. Yeah, and this is one of the things you know. A couple of things I'm I'm thinking about when you're you're bringing this up, and this is a good point. I, you know, one of the fears that I I, I always have in these types of presentations is that that the visuals kind of overshadow the language mm -hmm. uh, results or the, 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 what they actually end up producing, you know, as, a, as a, uh, communicators in, of English. And I was, I was really pleased this time because I, I really saw that, as you mentioned, you know, that they were, they were prepared. They, they were really going into in depth their, their topics. Yes. Some of them would read part portions, um, you know, but they had so many visuals available, like you said, that they could really draw on. Uh, if it's the food, they could talk about that. They didn't need to have something written down necessarily, but then they would have other things written down. And it just worked the way that they all prepared and, and based on each of their levels uh, of proficiency, they really made it work by kind of mixing it and mixing it up. I noticed that some groups would... I, I compared because I was able to listen to their first presentation and I would see how they would present their second and third. But because they had an opportunity to repeat their presentations many times, oftentimes they got better as, in fact, they in, invariably, they, they would get better at it as, as they would do it over and over. And so they, they got better and more comfortable as they, as they did it. Whereas at the end of the the presentations, I think were much better than maybe their first uh, their first go at it. Um, but so I that's that was something else that I liked how it uh, because they had opportunities to present many times because they had so many different visuals that the production I felt was was uh, right up in in line with uh, the visual appeal right that they that they put into their project so. I think this was is something, you know, a takeaway for me, you know, any type of project like this that how do we prepare students really depends on what the, they do day to day in the classroom. And I think this is a result of that. It's really uh, a shout out really to the teachers in, in Prope, the, the work that these students did in each of their respective classes, that this type of presentation uh, is not something that is in addition to what they did in the class. This is actually a result of what they learned and, you know, not so, not saying that they prepared for these presentations, you know, in class every day, but it's more of a result of work that they, it's an accumulation of work that they did in their, in their classes. And this was just a, an opportunity for them to demonstrate, demonstrate that. So, um, I think, we have to be careful how we link and prepare students for this. And this kind of talks, this kind of goes to what we've talked about in the past with regard to performance tasks, right? And, right. and the slight difference between a performance task and this idea of task-based learning. Mm -hmm. Whereas in my, in, you know, in, in the way I look at it, this would be more of a performance task, not necessarily a result of task-based learning where they we're doing these exact same task over and over and over and over and over in class. No, right. what they did was they learned certain aspects of their country. They would write out an, uh, a writing assignment and reflect on that. And here in this event, they were able just to share those experiences basically and, and share some of those that knowledge that uh, was a result of other you know, tasks that led up to this event. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, as you mentioned about the, the performing tests, uh, I think, yes, this is, uh, it goes a little bit beyond the idea of the classroom itself. I saw them, uh, I, I saw some of these guys days before working. Some of uh, one uh, girl approached me and asked me to answer a survey uh, related. I didn't know I, I didn't have an idea that it was related to the event, uh, but uh, they asked me uh, to answer a survey about Brazil precisely, and uh, I saw they were, they were uh, some of them, not everybody, but I could tell a couple of them in the part they took for the presentation, 
they went beyond and they you could tell when something that they were saying was uh, part of their likes or beliefs or their own system you know their personal being uh, there was this guy talking about um, one philosopher from a country and he when he jumped into he was talking about the characters and when he, when he jumped into him uh, his face changed his word his his way of speaking totally changed he started to make more mistakes because he wanted to go beyond what he had prepared because he wanted to show somehow that he knew about this guy and he did his best to give as much information as possible and that's where i could tell he had his notes for the different characters he presented when he talked about this guy he didn't even look at the notes he just had the information and he wanted to talk about his style and the kind of things he said and 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 i think that was something very personal same thing happened when i got to and that was kind of a dichotomy because uh, when i got to a country and i asked them why do you choose this country and they say well, the teacher told me to, <laughs> and all of them agree on that. They they said that the teacher told me this country, and uh, and the first expression was like, well, we had to. But once they started to talk about it, and once they went, for example, the girl that uh, talked about the food was not the girl that actually cook. So it was kind of interesting all of this situation because. The girl that actually prepared cook, uh, uh, it was a, a girl that was not talking about the food. So at the end, they all were really excited about talking about how they prepared the food and um, the ingredients, and and they wanted me to try it, and 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 they were really excited about this. So so what I mean is that um, yes, there is a big difference between bringing tasks into the classroom and uh, motivating students for a performance task, which at the end, uh, that's one of the things we want in, in I would say uh, that, that, we may, uh, that we may encourage our students to do in every single language classroom, focus on the functionality of the language, what you're gonna do with it and what is the purpose and go for it. And then the intention of the class becomes not uh, learning the language. Uh, I mean, it's, it has to go hand to hand but mainly the focus for the students becomes like achieving something functional, purposeful. Uh, in, and in this case, it's on the kind of things we do like in Teacher Learning Cast, which is sharing. Yeah, it's funny. You were mentioning about the, the student and uh, his, his talking about the, the philosopher. And I'm not sure if you're talking about the Germany yeah. uh, stand. Yeah. But I had the exact effect. I was getting ready to share that same observation that same because I, I I saw the same thing I saw a student who really got into uh, talking about philosophers and 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 he started talking about his opinions on philosophy and I was just sitting there just yeah I was shocked and just by his enthusiasm and you know the his language I wasn't even critiquing or even thinking about his language I was just more wrapped up into what he was trying exactly. to say and I realized I said I thought that's what this is about. I mean, yes. yeah, we we can you know try to nitpick the language, but you know something like this, uh, this type of presentation, it's really about how students are sharing or projecting the message, their opinions, their their knowledge, uh, and trying to get beyond the nitpicking of all the little. Uh, grammatical errors. You know, we, we do enough of that, I'm sure, in class, and we're we're very closely monitoring students' language in, in the day to day, usually in, in activities that we we see them. Uh, and but something like this, where they're really projecting a, a message and, and an attitude, really, and and just a uh, their own opinions. I think that's where it's at. I think this is where, you know, I look back and say, you know, for me, something like this, I think is a success when students reach that level right. of enthusiasm and, and, and just are, are kind of going in and, and not, and for them they're themselves, not worried about making mistakes, that they're trying to just project the message, you know, that they want to share. So that was something, and you mentioned about students 
making decisions about the the uh, what the stands and the countries that they were to represent. One of the things that w is left to do in our academy, and I think is a very important in anyone um, that is uh, you know planning these types of activities. I think it's always important to kind of go back and debrief, go back with the teachers and and the students to ask, well, how did you feel about the event? You know, what did you like? What were some things that were challenging? What did you not like? So that we can also learn, you know, to see if there's anything we can do differently if such an event would be scheduled again in, in the future. So I think this is something that I know from from my perspective as a coordinator for for this academy is to go back to, to with the student, the teachers and really talk with them to see you know, are we, are we happy with the way it went? Are, are there things that we could have done differently and so on? Um, but I think this is a, an important aspect, one, one in, you know, how, how much flexibility can we give students in a, an event like this? You know, how much uh, decision-making process, uh, decision-making can they be a part of? You know, what kind of decisions can they make for their own, uh, on their own, so that they can be more uh, in uh, involved in the own process uh, to to really present whatever they want to to present. This is something for me personally that I, I want to find out and learn more about uh, to see if we made the best decisions uh, in that uh, regard. But I think um, it's a careful balance between giving students a level of choice and also uh, direction, right? So that you know they have the best uh, chance for success. If we give them too, too many options, then I think we can see examples where this would be kind of, uh, you know, it might be less than ideal, right? Because there, there's not gonna be enough direction and, and guidance for them to, to really, you know, do something well. So again, I think it's just a balance, finding that sweet spot between giving them, you know, the, the choice to make decisions on their own, but also the guidance and saying, okay, you have to work within these boundaries uh, to, uh, you know, to, to, to do a good uh, job. And, and I think uh, what you mentioned, uh, it, it, it worked somehow well in, in this event, because uh, when they were talking about in different stands, that when they were talking about different things, uh, there were a couple of aspects in which I, on, on purpose, asked them, uh, one question or two questions, which I was kind of sure they were not going to answer or they were not really uh, prepared to answer in the sense that uh, it may be too too much of a detail as to know. But uh, it surprised me that every time I asked something, they had something to answer. I think one of the questions was not answered and somebody honestly told me like, well, that I don't know. But, uh, but aside that, the rest of the questions I asked they they did uh, uh, had have, have the information and uh, and they could answer the different questions. I mean, it was not part of their presentation, but they gathered this information and simple things. And these examples of uh, the engagement from the students. I mean, we just mentioned one example. Uh, maybe I mentioned a second one with the food in in, in one of the countries. But uh, it also happened uh, in another stand with the music itself. When they were talking about the music, they got excited about it. They brought, they actually brought examples of the music, and they um, uh, the preparation of the way they uh, they presented the, the characters, the important characters in some of the stands. They noted that they actually care about it and in detail. I don't know for here in Brazil, for example, they have this little cube with important characters, and uh, the name was in in foam letters. So. So you could tell that they actually invested some time in doing this. And, and, um, and this is uh, something, uh, putting it in, in, in simple terms for classes, this is something I tell my, my, my students at teaching worship. If you present something, you could present hundreds of things in an hour. If you talk about vocabulary, you can present thousands of words in an hour if you go one after the other. If you present the grammar format, you can present all of the tenses in one hour because of your idea of just come into the classroom and present and that's it. But it's not about that. It, it's about the use, the contextualization, the internalization, starting from if you want to see it from different levels and, and go through uh, Bloom's taxonomy, well, you can start from uh, identification towards the um, 
uh, internalization and creation by themselves, if you want to go in that sense. If you don't want to see it in the terms of the scales, is jumping from one thing to another with the same language feature so that they acquire, and not only acquire certain things, they, they uh, uh, develop other starting points for going beyond with the language, like in this case, I suppose. I think, uh, and, 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 and I'm sure I'm not wrong about this because I've been there when I was a student like 20 years ago. When you do this kind of events, it sticks with you forever. There are things that you will remember forever about the context itself, in this case, the countries, about the hard work that it was, and about, um, about the language itself. There are things that will stick with you. And the next aspect about this that will stick with you is that this is the kind of situations in which uh, working teams are built. If you want to actually have a working team, if you actually want to have an academy working together, if you actually have, want to have a gang, if you want to call it like that, uh, a strong group, you have to work together. And you have to, uh, maybe it's not the best word to use, but, uh, but it will make my point. You have to suffer the process of going through hard work, which gives you at the end satisfaction for all parties in the planning and that's what builds a community yeah this is such an important point this idea of working together you know i i have had many interesting discussions with this particular group on working together and in my writing class i asked my students to write or to maintain a writing journal a reflective writing journal every week so every friday they would write out things that they liked, disliked, challenges that they faced, successes that they had, just any type of reflection on that particular week. And invariably, you know, there were some, not all students. So a lot of students really like to work in groups because we worked in groups a lot this, this semester. Not every week, but many, many weeks where uh, students were asked to work in groups. And some students uh, found it very challenging to work in groups. Uh, they found it, you know, difficult to maybe make decisions about who was to do what. Maybe it was uh, difficult to maintain equal participation. So maybe some students felt like they did more work than others. And they found it challenging for various reasons. And so we spent a lot of time this semester working and discussing the importance and, re and recognizing that sometimes it is a challenge to work in groups. But that there is a value and there is a, 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 a need to learn how to work w well with others, you know, because this is um, what they're going to be faced with in, in real life. We have to work with others and we have to work together. Sometimes we have to make decisions and, and, and uh, reach a consensus and maybe not everyone always agrees with the, the decision, but we have to move forward. You know, there is uh, uh, important... Uh, you know, it's important to learn how to work within, with, uh, with others. Speaking in terms of teachers and, and within the academy, you know, for me personally, and, you know, uh, this is something that I want to discuss with the rest of the uh, teachers, but something like this does require a lot of work. But if everyone does his or her own part, uh, it's, it's not such a, a burden on any one particular person. I, it, a lot of good things can happen in an event like this that does require a lot of work, but if there is good teamwork throughout, then it becomes manageable. It becomes something that's not such a burden on any one person. And I certainly hope that this was the case for this event. This is something that, again, I want to reach out to the other teachers to see, you know, if any one teacher felt that this was an extra burden on them that wasn't really worth doing you know for for future events because you know my initial impression is that you know teachers worked well together and uh, it was doable precisely because they worked together it wasn't just one person uh, uh, that that did all the work in fact i felt a little uncomfortable someone came to me and you know said you know congratulations as if it were really my you know my thing and and I, I felt uncomfortable because it, this is not, it was not my thing. This is something that a lot of teachers worked 
uh, together on, made decisions to, and the students themselves did uh, a lot of work and, and it was just a group effort. So uh, the takeaway I wanna share with everyone is that things like this can happen right. if people work together and, and you know, events don't have to be just social. Like this is something that you mentioned it earlier that, you know, you felt like the students were really enjoying what they were doing and, and they might, you know, they, they're, they're gonna hopefully leave this experience and, and remember this experience for, for some time. And I think it's precisely because there's an academic component that it's not just a social event. It's not just getting together and, and, and you know, and getting together and, and socializing, which I don't, you know, deny that that's important. But, you know, within an educational context, which is what we're talking about, we're, we're in formal education. We, we work in a, an institution that is responsible for helping learners, you know, achieve their goals to in order to. Uh, reach a degree, you know, we have a responsibility to find ways that students can be social, can have fun, but also can learn, uh, can learn a specific, have specific learning goals that, that they can achieve. I think both can, can be achievable. And I think that they actually leave that experience appreciating it more by having that academic component as well as the social component. Yes, I totally agree with you. I think uh, it, that's a key in every single action we do in our relationship with students. They are here because of a reason, and that reason is academic, formative. And we are here because of the same reason in a different role, but it's exactly the same reason. Uh, in some uh, cases, and I'm talking about in general education, in some cases, uh, and, and I think most of them at this level, students pay for this student uh, people make sacrifices i i met people from uh different countries in which a uh, hundred of a hundred um, uh, people I, I mean literally a hundred uh, a number of, of, of um relatives gathered together in order to send one person to college abroad and they and they suffer all of this and they do all of this knowing that the advantage of that person going to college is going to be for that person mainly and maybe a couple of them uh, in the close family but not the rest of them literally i heard this from a girl that that came from um i guess it's uh, china or korea one place of those and uh, uh her teacher told me this a hundred members of their family uh, gathered together to achieve this I'm just I'm mentioning as an example because here in Mexico we do have the same kind of situations. We do have people uh, which make different kind of sacrifices, not only economical but different kind of sacrifices to pull students through college to uh, achieve certain goals. And uh, it's an educational goal. And, and and don't get me wrong. I'm I don't I'm not I'm not meaning that it's all about uh, just. Uh, acquiring information and developing knowledge no it's it's an integral formation for life for the kind of people we want for life and in all those senses and that's my point i totally agree with you it has whatever you do in your relationship with the students it has to cover the academic thin line whether students are your friends whether students are having an event in which you are invited, whether students are uh, doing this kind of performance tasks, whether students are uh, involved in different cultural or altruistic activities, it all has to go. If you are part of it as a teacher, if you are a teacher, you have to cover that thin line of um, focusing also in the academic objectives. And finally, from my end, uh, Ben, I, I also agree with this idea. This, this is not extra work. This is something that may require uh, implementing it, evaluating it in order to, uh, to take advantage of the new planning when it comes again, in order to have uh, guidelines that leads our students to uh, go through this process uh, in a way that they actually develop and achieve the academic objectives of the courses. 
I always see these kind of events as an investment. Uh, a long time ago, I was a uh, coordinator of the self access center, and that was pretty much the idea that it's an investment. Yes, it, it's going to take time. Yes, it's going to require from the teacher some planning. Yes, it's going to require a lot of work from the students. Well, sometimes it's also a lot of work for the teachers uh, and, and, and all together. But this is an investment because uh, doing this, they develop skills that, we, that, that will make your classes easier. And the processes that you have in class, they will become more fluent. And students by themselves will, uh, the kind of abilities they develop in this event, if uh, you have uh, clear purposes and clear paths to follow, uh, they may develop their own independence. And this will be advantages for your own classes if you go through this process again in your classes. The problem would be if you have a very strict event in which they only work as soldiers doing exactly what you say, well, it's, um, it may not be that advantageous in that sense. But this that you mentioned about making decisions and knowing uh, how much you have to control the boundaries so they make their own decisions, this is just an investment. Because later on, I bet next semester, this experience is going to let them something very important that if the teachers understand which part of the processes were the ones that um, uh, made the students develop motivation, interest, knowledge, attitudes, uh, and they bring it back into the classroom, that's, that's the investment that it's going to pay immediately next semester. Yeah, and, you know, usually I've, I've had cases, not so much with this project, but something similar where teachers come to me in the academy saying, oh, this is not working, or I don't, you know, it's more work, or I can't do it this way. But just by having that conversation and dialogue, usually something can be worked out, right? So when you look at something like this, I kind of equate this to an event like this where some might say, well, this is, you're saying, okay, it's not extra work, but you got to do this and this, and this would be imply extra work. Usually if you, if you have good communication and good teamwork, things can be uh, decided upon and compromised and, and, and negotiated with throughout the academy in a way that things can be resolved. And these, these issues of extra work can be diminished or even eliminated just by reaching some sort of an agreement, right? Or making some sort of compromise in certain aspects in a way that uh, they're all, everybody's on the same page, but the results, it doesn't affect the final result. And so something like this, again, just takes planning and it takes, um, I think, just good communication um throughout the academy and as well as with the students making sure that there's good communication with the students uh, throughout the process um, so that this is not thrown upon them at the last minute that this is something not looked at as being extra work that it's really just part of uh, the day-to-day -day activities that uh, students are, are participating in so but i just wanted to throw that out this this idea of really combining the the social part of learning, which I think, again, is very important, uh, you know, and just uh, really appealing to uh, the social nature of our students and being able to, having them, uh, you know, share and make uh, decisions and making uh, decisions about based on their interest and their needs, their, their learning objectives, their preferences, and really learning to be flexible enough to see that these presentations, if you were to look at these, there is, there's some commonalities, but there's also a lot of variety. There's differences in how they present it. And I think that's one of the things that I really liked the most is that it wasn't that all the stands looked the same. Of course, they were representing different countries, but they were uh, unique in how they uh, were presenting uh, the realia and the different aspects of uh, what they knew about each uh, country. So um, I think we're about at, at an hour here, PD. I just want to uh, throw this out. Uh, I'm glad we had an opportunity to share this experience. And uh, I'm sure that in later episodes, after I have a chance to meet with my students to see how they thought about the event and, and talk with the, the teachers, that uh, I can share some additional insights in, in this experience. But my first, you know, my initial experience. Again, this just happened yesterday. 
was uh, that I think it was a success. I think the stu right. students really did exceptionally well. Uh, that uh, I was very appreciative of the learners and other levels and other teachers who came by and not just came in and stuck their head in and left or just took pictures and left, but actually interacted with the right. students. I'm very appreciative to those teachers who made the effort to come in and uh, uh, really interact with our learners because this was really the goal. This was the goal here was that Propy learners uh, interacted with other learners with other teachers and uh they did that in uh in good form really so um uh, yeah I, I, I think you're making a point that i don't want to pass by uh it's it's uh there were a lot of things achieved before the event i mean when they settle the the tables that was uh not the end but at that moment you could tell mission accomplished right but that mission accomplished could have been um, could have been down or couldn't be torn apart if um, if there were not people to actually be there and interact with them and every success that they had and all the hard work that was because this was just a presentation this was a fun part uh, all the hard work could have had a very bad backwards effect if no people showed there if there are no teachers interacting um i was surprised to see how many of them which i don't i don't teach classes in these levels i i don't see them until the next year uh, until september next year and then they're, they're going to be here for a year and i was surprised to know how much they identified me they knew my name they could tell that i was a musician they could uh, i could sense that some of the things they were saying in the presentation were especially towards uh, trying to engage me especially with certain things. And, uh, and for example, when they were presenting uh, important people, once they started to talk about the musician, they exactly knew which one to, to give me in the hand or show me clothes for, to be engaged somehow. So uh, I was amazed to, uh, for the sensitivity they have. And that means, uh, they are a lot more attentive than I am towards them. And, and that's something I'm going to change, definitely. Uh, I'll try to be a lot more attentive. I know it's a lot of students and it's hard when you don't see them on a daily basis, but for sure I'll try to get more in touch with these guys, even though they're not my students during this year. Yeah, and I think, uh, and, you know, events like this, you know, I, I re was reflecting a lot on, uh, we had an interview with Adriana Macias, who she also has uh, every year a very successful, uh, you know, presentation of uh, material design and has her students do set up stands. And and these types of events, I think, are, are really good. And, and I, I hope we get to a point, uh, PD and our BA, that we have so many possible events like these that we could do that we actually have to limit them and <laughs> throughout the ba right? right because we have so many options right to to do that you know I, i'm saying this um really as an encouragement really right. and maybe hopeful that we get to a point where we have this level of these types of events these educative events right. that we decide as an academy which events are, are best and at what levels and how are they to be conducted so that learners really, I think, have uh, can really take advantage of these types throughout the, B, the BA. So not just in certain you know semesters or whatever, right. but uh, that they're strategically implemented throughout so that uh, they get the most out of their educative experience at, uh, with us in the BA. But I think that, um, yeah, this was a good experience. Uh, this was... You know, there was a lot of unknowns going into it. Um, and if those of you who are listening, you know, I my worded advice would be to try to plan, work with other teachers, but not may, be afraid to try events, right? Because, um, you know, you're not going to know unless you, you try. And if you work together as a team, I think, uh, you know, you're more likely to have uh, better results. Man, I like the talk today. It's uh, I, I like when things go this practical when you could actually see the examples, and uh, maybe for some of our audience, uh, 
we may need to get a little bit deeper into a uh, theoretical aspect of it. But today, we actually were discussing things about um, uh, so the social aspect of teaching, which I think some uh, there's an author that mentions uh, a difference between social socializing and associating, which is uh, the idea for the classroom uh, kind of what we want. And so we, you, we can look into it or, or you can at home, the audience can look into these terms also for your classroom. We also talk about working together. We talk about the performance task and teamwork in this, in this, um, uh, in, in this talk from a practical point of view. We are talking about uh, process, product, reflection, feedback, and backwash effects and in, in order to have integral development. So there's a lot to say, and there are a lot of topics that we can cover and retake whenever our audience is willing to. Just let us know, give us a, a note and advice, send us an email, put it in Teacher Learning Cast Space at Facebook and, and here at the YouTube transmission or whatever you want to. Let us know if you, if you want us to cover something in more detail or specifically, and we can look into it. Uh, we may not be the best experts on certain topics, but at least we can look for an article in Google and discuss it. <laughs> yeah, and I want to personally encourage anyone who participated in this event, if they want to, if they feel comfortable leaving feedback on the event, positive or negative, uh, it's all good. If you want to not, if you choose not to leave uh, feedback public, if you don't feel comfortable and want to just reach out to me personally and come by my office or send me an email, um, I would really appreciate any feedback that you had. Those students or and or teachers who actually were there at the event, uh, give give me some feedback. Uh, let me know what you think. Let other teachers know what you think, uh, because um, this is how we you know learn and and know you know what works and what doesn't is really getting that type of feedback uh, after the fact. So, I want to thank everybody. Ben, uh, I, who I, 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 there's a lot to say, but there are yeah. things that I don't want to leave in the air because uh, what I saw there as uh, as part of the audience of this event is that this is not an event in which students were told you are going to present something about a country and they did they spent days in class and the teacher oh prepare your things and prepare your things which which i know about these cases frequently in classes because we are going to have a presentation and you suspend classes or take the class time in order to tell the students get ready and get ready and get ready and teacher is not actually doing anything in the classroom this is not what I saw. What I saw in here is students uh, working parallel to class aspects in order to accomplish a very nice product. I saw people that I know that were not able to speak a sentence together at the beginning of the semester, and now they are doing nice performances and they are achieving uh, a good thing with this, which means they actually work academically in the classroom. This is one of the things, or one of the main reasons I uh, teaching prope is is fun for me, is because students really come in at one level, and you can really see a big difference at the end of just even one semester, even more so after a year. But uh, yeah, and and this is this group is no exception, right? And it's just it's just a speaks to their hard work. You know, the teachers, all we can do is design learning experiences and, and give them opportunities. It's the students themselves that do the work, spend the time, do the homework, participate in class, ask questions. Those are the ones that are seeing the results and seeing their own improvement uh, in short order, in short time. So, um, yeah, this is uh, something that I think is uh, I particularly like for with propi groups is because you really see that that level of improvement uh and you see it in in all levels but especially when you with the lower levels with a a2 mm -hmm. this again is about an a2 level you right. really see that that difference thank you ben for this talk it's exciting uh there will be a lot to say and i think we're going to get some topics from this later on uh but i want to thank you for today's talk Thank you, Pity, and thanks everyone for listening. Again, feel free to leave feedback, and and uh, we'll um, I'll be following up with hopefully some uh, deeper insights later on after I get more feedback from teachers and students. But thanks uh, for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see everyone in the next broadcast. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Keep on learning.